Revolutionary fighters in Libya have shelled the city of Sirte before a renewed push, but they have faced some tough resistance from Gaddafi loyalists. The battle is centering around a conference center and the Green Square, and a heavy sandstorm is slowing the advance of anti-Gaddafi fighters. Gaddafi loyalists are also fighting back with snipers in and around the city. Zena Hutter reports now on the battle for Sirte. The biggest attack on Sirte yet. This time, the objective is to take control of the city. Libyan fighters launched a full-scale assault, advancing from three directions, the east, south, and west, using all their heavy firepower, rockets, tank shells. Loyalists are now surrounded in the heart of the city, but they are fiercely defending the seat of Gaddafi's family and tribe. Loyalists have been putting up a fight. It seems they would rather die than surrender. Gaddafi's snipers are positioned on high buildings in and around Sirte, and they have been slowing the advance of anti-Gaddafi fighters. Gaddafi loyalists are believed to be in what is known as Giza, an area where Mauritanians who were given Libyan citizenship live. Not far from that neighborhood is the Ouagadougou Conference Center, where Gaddafi used to receive world leaders. The artillery barrages are turning their focus on those areas. For many of these fighters, Ouagadougou is more than a loyalist stronghold. It is a symbol of Sirte's preferential status under Gaddafi, who made this city Libya's second capital. If we control CERT, it would mean we liberated Libya. It was Gaddafi's political bastion. We can declare victory after CERT falls. But fighters have been suffering casualties. This three-week battle has been costly on both sides and civilians. Thousands have left CERT. But the preferential status that earned Gaddafi loyalty from parts of the population has made some choose to stay. Reports of fighters from other African countries persist. It is mainly those from Mauritania and Chad who are still inside and they are fighting at us. The city center is a mere five kilometers from the front line, but it is proving to be a difficult fight. Breaking off with the past, it is more than a final push for liberation. A city that brought Gaddafi to power. For these fighters, it's a place that will bring an end to his rule. And let's go live now to Zena Hodder in CERT. And Zena, let me pick up on the civilian note. Uh, for those civilians who have decided to stay in CERT because of a loyalty to uh, Muammar Gaddafi or because maybe they just simply can't get out of uh, the city right now, what is life like for them now? Uh, do they dare even leave their homes? Well, most civilians are believed to be in areas close to the coast, approximately five kilometers from where we are. This is what most fighters have been telling us. It's very difficult, really, for us to independently confirm what is happening inside. But we do know that thousands have fled over the past three weeks. Most of them um, tell you, they tell you similar stories, really. There's no food, no running water, no electricity, no fuel. And many of them have been trapped inside. Some of them prevented from leaving uh, by Qaddafi loyalists. But I have to tell you that anti-Qaddafi fighters have made progress. We are now in Sabami. This is a residential neighborhood which was uh, under the control of Qaddafi's the men only yesterday. Now it's fighters, anti-Qaddafi fighters who are roaming the streets. It is a residential neighborhood, villas. You can see green flags hoisted on top of the villas. When you go inside the homes, you will see Qaddafi's posters. Mm. You will see certificates, army certificates. Most of the people who used to live here are, were commanders and officers in the Qaddafi army. And inside these homes, we actually saw a lot of food supplies. And this is what commanders here were pointing out to us. Look, they were ready for this. They were stockpiling um, food. They were stockpiling ammunition. Then they were preparing for this battle. But this whole neighborhood, and I should mention that the building behind me was a barracks belonging to the Qaddafi army. Most of the people here have now fled. And I asked the fighters you know, where have they gone? He goes, some of them managed to escape. Others, um, you know, uh, uh, went further south to the city center where loyalists are now holed up. Boy, and you can hear all of the uh, gunfire behind you there, Zena. Uh, Zena Hodder for us uh, in CERT. And uh, if we pause for just a second, you can hear the gunfire just behind her. Uh, Zena, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fighters loyal to Colonel Gaddafi in his hometown of Sirte have barricaded themselves inside a conference center. Forces of the interim government are continuing their all-out assault, which has taken them nigh to the center of Sirte. Our world affairs correspondent Richard Galpin has been monitoring the events.
After the intense fighting in Sirte yesterday, pro-government forces renewed their assault on the key Gaddafi stronghold this morning. But with the sandstorm reducing visibility, the attack did not seem as ferocious. Much of the city has already fallen to government fighters. The front lines are now around the center of Sirte. But here, Gaddafi loyalists are still holding out. They're proving difficult to dislodge, despite coming under heavy bombardment. Families are still fleeing the fighting. But these are the lucky ones. Many have not been able to escape. We had no water, no food. We didn't know how to get out. There is no electricity. We have been trapped for three weeks because of the fighting. NATO airstrikes have been continuing to try to hasten the fall of Sirte. But many of the government forces on the ground are inexperienced and face an enemy determined to fight to the end. Richard Galpin, BBC News. Well, our World Affairs correspondent Jonathan Head is in Sirte and earlier he gave me the very latest from there. It's been a mixed day. Uh, the government side has been really blocked on a number of front lines, very close to the center, but there are stubborn areas of resistance being held by very well-armed Gaddafi loyalists. Um, the strange buildings you can see behind me are actually giant dovecotes that were built on what is a complex built by per, per, uh, Muammar Gaddafi. It's one of his personal complexes where he used to stay and had practice farming here in Sirte. And behind it is uh, a university and uh, conference center, which is being very fiercely held. And uh, just a few hundred meters in that direction, uh, the government uh, tanks and rocket launchers are firing salvo after salvo into that complex. We've seen great pillars of smoke coming up. We haven't gone over there because there's a risk of snipers standing up at the, uh, on that side but they are finding it very hard to advance. They took quite a number of casualties yesterday, and they're reluctant to send their fighters in uh, to deal with these well-defended buildings until they've hit them harder with the artillery that they have. Well, given the defending that's going on, are there questions being raised about who might be in those buildings? Could Colonel Gaddafi be there or members of his family? Well, that's interesting because whenever so something is very, very strongly defended, and CERT has been, there's always the suspicion there's a senior Gaddafi member. Uh, it's believed that Colonel Gaddafi's son, Mutasin, who was uh, the one who ran, a number of, uh, ran some of his military units uh, and is w a very much a wanted man, is inside that complex, which would explain why, why it's being so well defended. The likelihood of Colonel Gaddafi himself being there, I think, is small. We've had no evidence of it. And frankly, this is a besieged town with a shrinking area under Gaddafi control. It wouldn't be a logical place for him to stay if he wants to keep up putting out these messages that he does every now and again, trying, uh, I think, a probably rather futile way to, to rouse his supporters. Um, but it's not just his own diehard soldiers back there. There are ordinary people in CERT who are almost blindly loyal to him, who've been well armed and who passionately believe, and we talk to, be, the, we talk to civilians today coming out of CERT, they honestly believe they'll be killed if they leave, that they have to stay and fight to the death, which perhaps explains why this resistance is so stubborn. And what about the significance of CERT itself and, and moving forward of Libya once it does fall? Well, it's interesting you come to this place, and it's a nondescript little town. It, a lot of very well-funded building projects have gone on here, personal projects of Colonel Gaddafi's. It's not very big. It only ever had about 70 to 100,000 people. Uh, but it was his own personal project. It was a tiny fishing town that he built up. Uh, he stayed here. He's fortified it in places. He certainly armed it. That's very obvious, the amount of weapons there are there. And it straddles the main road between Benghazi and Tripoli. This is a very spread out country, only six million people with a few population centers. This one strategically, if it remained in well-armed Gaddafi hands, really the government wouldn't feel it controlled the whole country. So I think it matters a great deal to them to take control of this place. And once that happens, they've stated this publicly, then they will stay, say that the conflict in Libya is over, that the new era has begun.